conference earlier. Sky News a US politics analyst and former Australian ambassador to the US, Joe Hockey. Joe Hockey, great to see you again. Uh, thanks for your time. Look, even Donald Trump's enemies in the Republican Party today were uniting behind him at the uh, Republican convention uh, behind you. People like Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. On the other side, many Democrat politicians are wanting President Joe Biden to quit as their candidate in the November election. So really, chalk and cheese, what betting odds would you now give on Trump becoming president again? Well, in, in my view, there is a real momentum behind the Republicans. And it's, as usual, taken a couple of events to make that dramatically obvious. Obviously, Joe Biden failed dismally in the debate. But what it illustrated was his suffering cognitive decline. And there is a general sadness across America about that. I mean, a lot of families have been affected by parents and grandparents that have gone through that. So there was no celebration of it. In fact, uh, Donald Trump was really careful not to uh, overplay it or prosecute the argument. It was self-evident and, and it's irreversible. The second issue, of course, was Saturday night. And... Uh, you know, that just goes to the safety and security of America. It goes to the fact that Donald Trump showed a level of defiance and a strength of character that some had not seen uh, and or many had not seen in some cases. And that also had an impact as well. But the final thing about that is what that has done is it has forced Joe Biden to say, I am staying. He now has a legitimate excuse for not winning the election, if that should happen, that this event on Saturday showed that, John, uh, that uh, Joe Biden could not cower in the face of another assassin's bullet and cannot cower when things get tough. Well, look, since Trump was shot, um, Joe, as you know, a lot of blame has been put on the left for demonising Trump as a dictator. I'm not saying that led directly to the shooting. We don't know what did. But, you know, painting him as a dictator, a threat to democracy. And one of the people who did that is Kevin Rudd, now our ambassador to Washington. You just had a chat with him. Uh, he's called uh, Trump a traitor to the West. Nuts, the most destructive president in history. A man who drags American democracy through the mud, who abuses Christianity to justify violence. Now, when you interviewed Rudd, he said Australia can now work with Donald Trump as president. That's all very well. But is Kevin Rudd the man who can get the best deal for Australia from a Trump presidency when he's been as reckless as anyone in demonising him? Well, look, I don't really want to get into deep criticism of... Kevin Rudd or, 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 frankly, as far as I'm concerned, it's Team Australia. And, look, if Kevin Rudd needs a hand, I'll give him a hand. Others will as well. You know, there was the example that J.D. Vance said some pretty extreme things about, um, about uh, Donald Trump when he was a never-Trumper. So I think the road to Damascus is well-worn and we'll see if Kevin Rudd is going to walk that as well.